Okay, here is the last section of the CPT manual. This is the medicine section. Uh, after this video, we have been through every part of the CPT manual. And in the next video, we will do uh, the hick picks. All right, just like every other section, we do start with the table of contents here. You will see it's fairly extensive. Uh, the medicine section is a little bit of a catch-all. Um, I think it would be very good to get in the habit of coming here and kind of finding your section or your particular um, area of interest and then go and search from there. I would not just start searching here, nor, of course, would I go to the index because I never go to the index. Um, so you can kind of see, like if you're looking for uh, vaccines, you can see that they're up here. If you're looking for dialysis, this would be here. If you're looking for um, non-invasive vascular um, types of services, they're over here. If you're looking for allergy testing, um, if you're looking for IVs, whether it's hydration, chemotherapy, therapeutic injections, therapeutic infusions, all of that would be here. So see, you can kind of use this, I think, a little bit better than maybe some of the other sections. You have a, um, a couple of green pages. I do not think this is any new uh, information. It's just kind of reminding you what certain things mean. And then we go right into the medicine section. This first section here, this first column, these are immune globulins, Ig therapies. Um, this is the actual product. So this is the actual medication or chemical. In combination with the chemical or the product, you also have to have an administration code. So I make myself a little note here to go to page 660. We'll get there in a minute. I don't want to do a lot of flipping uh, back and forth because it kind of messes up with the focusing. But this is the product. And then for the product, you have to have an administration of it. So that will be on page 660. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, then we go straight into our immunizations or our vaccines. Uh, also with the vaccines, you have administration codes, the expertise of poking, and then you actually have your product um, or the, the chemical, the goop that's within the syringe. Um, let's talk a minute about administration codes for vaccines, not for immune globulins. These are therapeutic. They're given not as a prophylaxis or um, a uh, antibody, a vaccine. These are given therapeutically, whereas vaccines generally are given prophylactically. They're, they're going to give you an immunization or a vaccine to keep you from getting sick. You have several, one, two, three, four, five, six um, administration codes. Your first administration code with its add-on, so uh, 90460 and 90461, these are with counseling. What counseling means is the physician is actually going over the risks and benefits, the side effects, um, all of that kind of information in person with the patient or the patient's parents. These are 18 years and younger. Um, they are by component. So you could have two, three, four, five components within one injection. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, if a patient is just given an influenza virus shot, that is one component, just the flu is in there. So you would only use 90460 if the counseling was done. Um, a very common multi-component uh, vaccine is MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella. Those are all in one actual shot, but there's three components, your measles, your mumps, and your rubella. So how you would code the administration with counseling with that is your first component, your measles, would get the 90460. Then your mumps and rubella would get 90461 times 2. 
so that you are accounting for three different components and your counseling would account for counseling on the three different components. If you have an administration of a vaccine without any kinds of counseling or not enough counseling to qualify, then you would you or you're not under 18 too as well. Um, 904-71, and 74 are your um, administration codes that you would use. Your 71 and 72 are for your percutaneous, um, like your intradermal, those are your TB injections or your TB shots, uh, sub-Q or intramuscular. Your 73 and 74 are intranasal and oral. Okay, so let's get into our vaccines. This is the actual product. If you will look, everything is alphabetized. You'll find your flus in here. You'll find your hepatitis A's, hepatitis B, haemophilus, um, influenza types are in here. Those are your hibs. Um, all of uh, your polios are in here. Everything, pneumonia shots, everything that we're used to is in here. Let's look at a big um, com combination um, vaccine. Let's look at 90700, 90700. This is diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. So, and you see in parentheses, it has your acronym for that, which makes this very, very, very helpful. So this actually has three components. So you would, if there was counseling done, you would code for your first diphtheria. You would code the 90460, and then you have your tetanus and your pertussis. So you would do 90461 times two. The uh, code right above there, 90698, this is diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, haemophilus, influenza B, and polio. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five components here. So you would use 90460 and then 90461 times four. That way we have represented all five components if the counseling was done. So that's how we do the counseling. This is where your vaccines are. Kind of easy. At least at least you've got a ballpark of where it is. We go into psychiatry here. Whole lot of information, guidelines um, uh, for the use of these codes. If you are coding for a simple um, diagnostic psych eval, here's your add-on code, 90791. It would obviously be being piggybacked on something else. You have different um, psychotherapy um, information. You have therapy in crisis. You have group therapies. Uh, you have electric shock in here. 90870 is your electric shock or your electric convulsive. I guess shock is not nice anymore. Huh. Your biofeedback, so that's all your psychiatry type of stuff. So we had our immune globulins, then we had our vaccines, then we had our psychiatry, now we're going into dialysis. Keep in mind you have two kinds of dialysis, your hemodialysis, and then your other than, which is your peritoneal dialysis. Really make sure you're reading your codes on here, the descriptions. We go into end-stage renal disease. There's some good examples here on how to use these codes. These are billed monthly. I even put a note, billed monthly. Um, these are all generally based on age and how many visits that month. From dialysis, we go into gastroenterology. These are um, procedures that just didn't make it or maybe were new enough that they didn't make it into the um, regular section or they're just keeping them here because now this is where we're used to having them, which is interesting. Um, these may be motility, duodenal motility, esophageal type of function tests. 
Then we go into ophthalmology. This is your eye doctor stuff. So uh, here we have new patients and we have established patients. This is for the eye doctor. Uh, that was kind of freezing, sorry. Um, within the eye doctor, you have um, some special services. You have um, several different tonometry, uh, fitting of contact lens exams, that kind of thing in here. Then we have specific scope, ophthalmoscopy scope um, for the eyes. We have contact lens services. This is the prescription side of it. These are generally, um, I think a lot of these have the um, uh, contact lens for um, problems. Like if you need a contact lens that will go on top of your cataract lens, your new lens, or corneal, uh, corneal lens, that type of, of uh, contact lenses. Spectacle, different glasses. Then we go into our otorhinolaryngologic, which is our ENT, ears, nose, and throat. Most of this is geared towards your ears, vestibular testing. Here is your actual autologic function testing. Your hearing tests are in here. Cochlear implant type of stuff, therapeutic services um, for different speech generating. Um, issues, swallowing um, tests for different dysphagia issues. Then we go into cardiovascular. Here's your CPR 92950. 92950 is our CPR. We have some uh, good information in here for your coronary artery therapies. Kind of does a really good job of explaining. Um, some of the coronary artery therapies, in addition to what may be bundled in. This is what this area is telling you here, what's going to be bundled into those codes. Code 92920 is your PTCA or your percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. This is when they put the balloon, balloon into the coronary artery inflate the balloon and it pushes any flack, uh, plaque sorry, to the uh, sides of the wall. Um, this was brand new when I first started nursing mm, a while ago. Um, some people it was very effective on, some it was not. Uh, it's probably not going to be a, a permanent treatment. The plaque inflates again, um, that kind of thing. Uh, within this section, you do have some atherectomy, athro meaning plaque, ectomy meaning removal. So this is plaque removal from the coronary arteries. Everything in here is coronary arteries. Remember that. Then you have some stent placements, your 92928, 92929. These are both stents. If you read your... Um, uh, code description. These are per single major artery or branch. So if you had a stent placed in the um, left uh, artery, in the left descending and in the right coronary, those are two separate major um, branches or arteries. So you would actually use 92928 and 92929 because you have a stent in each different major artery. Uh, conversely, if you are putting three stents within the right coronary artery, you would only use 92928 once because it has the plural for the stents and it's the same major artery. Keep in mind some of these are for very specific reasons, 92932. 37 is through a coronary artery bypass, so the patient's already had a cabbage. 
and 92941. This is being done during a myocardial infarction or during a heart attack, during an MI. Um, so that's very specific for those. Still staying within the heart, um, but these are taking pictures of the electrical activity of the heart. First three codes um, on page 612, 93,000, 9300000, 005, and, and 010. These are all EKGs or ECGs, how they're said now. Um, they're done, uh, these are divided up. So your global is 93000. This is an EKG, perhaps done in a physician's office where he owns the EKG machine. He pays the staff to perform the EKG. He gets the global, pro the cost of it because he owns the equipment. He pays the staff who uh, performs the EKG and he in turn will interpret and render a report. Now, if an EKG is done in an emergency room or in a hospital or an out, outpatient facility, the doctor would just get the 93010 as it's the interpretation and report only because he didn't own the equipment and didn't own the staff. The next uh, four codes are your stress tests. We, talk a little, we talked a little bit about these on Wednesday. Again, your global uh, stress test would be your 93015. This is when the stress test is performed probably at a doctor's office. He owns the stress test treadmill. He has the staff. He starts the IVs. Um, he does everything there and he interprets and renders the report. If everything is done under his purview, then the 93015 would be his, all of it. If that stress test was being done in an outpatient facility, outpatient at the hospital, then the hospital is going to own the treadmill, they're paying the staff, so the physician only gets the interpretation and report. So he would, he would get the supervision 93016 and 93018 if it were um, being done on an outpatient a facility um, type of scenario. And then the facility would bill the 93017. Uh, 93224, this is a Holter monitor. These are the monitors that are put on a patient and then they go home with them and have them on for 48 hours or two weeks or whatever um, to record any arrhythmias that they may be having. Uh, different implantable and wear, wearable devices, good information in here, kind of talking about the different lingo, um, lots of definitions in here that I think is, is pretty good. They all have to do with um, the codes. These are programmable. That means that they are uh, programmed specifically um, to a specific patient for specific parameters or to look for certain stuff or to um, record only certain types of arrhythmias or something like that. Then we get into our echocardiograms. Again, we are still dealing with the heart. Echocardiograms. Um, I bracket off these first two codes, three and four, all have to deal with congenital. So I underline congenital would obviously be a very specific um, scenario that I would use those. So starting with 93306, these are transthoracic. These are the typical um, echoes that you're used to seeing um, or hearing about. It's just like an ultrasound. They put the goop on the chest and then they um, take the pictures through the chest. It's not invasive. The patient just lays there. Um, so 93306 is your transthoracic. All the way down to your 93308, these are transthoracic. And then 93312 is a transesophageal. This is much more invasive. They go down the throat and look at the heart um, from the esophagus side. And this is kind of telling you or showing you what the esophagus tube would look like or transduce, transducer. 
I do quite a bit of underlining in here just so I differentiate between the different codes. So probably would do you well to just kind of read and compare codes. Then we get into our cardiac caths. This is um, a little bit of, of guideline here. Um, I kind of divide these up. This gets very technical. Used to be we would have four, five, six codes for a cardiac cath. Now we can almost, if it's just a routine cardiac cath looking for blockages of the coronary arteries, we can do it with one code now, which is very, very, very uh, improved from what it used to be. I go through and I label whether they're a right or a left heart or both. So if it starts out right heart cath, I put an R. Left heart cath, I put an L. If it's a combined, I put R and L. That just kind of helps me because when I'm reading the scenario and I know it's a right heart cath, then I just go to my R's. If I know it's a left heart cath, I just go to my L's. Just, just helps me. Now let's think back about our rules of how we interpret the um, codes in this manual. 93454 is catheter placement coronary artery with coronary angiography. It includes the intraprocedural injection and has your imaging supervision and interpretation. Then you have your, your semicolon. So all of this is going to be included within all of these indented codes here. So um, I star probably the most common in here. Um, if a patient needs to have a coronary uh, arteriogram because they suspect they have blockages within their coronary arteries, which is probably the most typical reason that you would have a, a cardiac cath, then 93458 is going to be your code because you're going to read in your cardiac catheterization report that they have done a coronary angi angiography which is is in this included in here they've shot and die which is included in here and then they've done a left ventriculography which is included right here so this one code includes all of this plus your left ventriculography um, we will practice kind of going through a cardiac cath report and pulling out just this information. You don't really care about all the other fluff. You care what the end diagnosis is and then just gleaning out the information you need to find your code. The rest of it, I mean, it's fine for you to read because you're nosy, you're curious, but we don't need it from a coding standpoint. And then again, there are some L's and R and L's over here. Injection procedures, they do have a really good table now that they didn't used to have. So this is pretty user friendly if you like having tables. Um, some very uh, specific structural heart defect codes. Then we go into our electrophysiological um, uh, Product, uh, procedures and studies. This is different mappings of the electrical activity of the heart, um, arrhythmia induction, trying to induce arrhythmias um, under a, in a controlled environment so that they can map and see exactly where the wrong um, electrical impulse is coming from within the heart, electrical activity, and then they can potentially um, go in and ablate that area, something like that. Um, so you'll see bundle of his, uh, right ventricular recordings. They do a lot of this mapping um, in order to figure out uh, where pacemaker leads need to be, if ablation therapy is needed for maybe atrial fibrillation, and then they in, then they put in a pacemaker and make you completely um, dependent on the pacemaker, but it alleviates the atrial fib. Um, that kind of stuff. A few, uh, some non-invasive physiologic. Non-invasive means they're not poking you. These are very um, uh, specific codes, interrogation of uh, pacemakers, that kind of stuff, or ventilator assist devices. Then we get into the actual non-invasive vascular studies. So if they're looking for a... Um, 
deep vein thrombosis or something than they might be looking in here or different compression issues um, within uh, the veins and arteries. So it starts with some ultrasound of the carotids here. Then you have your arterial and your venous. Then we have our, then we go into pulmonary. We have ventilator management. These are billed on a daily basis. So they're per day. Then we have our respiratory therapy kinds of um, codes. These, in my opinion, respiratory therapy is, is not an area that is friendly to me. <laughs> um, so I've had to put a few notes in so that, so that as I read a scenario, I can you know, kind of guide myself into what kind of um, codes I'm looking for. Some respiratory therapy lingo in here, MVV is maximum volume ven ventilation. FVL is flow volume loop. Um, your 94010 is just a regular spirometry could be done in the office, in the hospital, anywhere. And then your 94060, this is your bronchodilation responsiveness um, uh, code. So let's say I have asthma, I go to the doctors because I'm really wheezing and the doctor gives me a breathing treatment and then I feel better. So this 94060 is going to be the code that we use. This is a pre um, bronchodilation, which is what that breathing treatment is, and a post reading, and it includes this spirometry up here. It includes it. Uh, code 94200, this maximum volume, uh, maximum breathing capacity, is assessing the lungs capacity or the lungs volume. 94726, plethysmography. Um, this is for airway collapse and dysfunctional collapse of the lung. And your 94727, this MVV that we wrote up here, 94727 is your MVV. Getting into allergy shots. I've never been, I haven't had a lot of experience with allergy shots or going to the allergist. Here is your different testing. Then once you're tested, if you do have an allergy, then you actually have some therapy or you get allergy shots. Um, some of these codes include the provision and some don't, like 95. 115. This is a professional service for administering the shot, but you as the patient has the provision. So you're going to the allergy clinic to get your allergy shot and you take your goop or your chemical substance with you and then they just administer it. Whereas 95120, this is administering it and includes the provision. So the actual allergist has your provision or your, your chemical that they've determined will help you with your allergies. Um, getting into some of our sleep study, sleep lab. Um, great definitions here. This is very good. Um, starting under the uh, polysomnography down here and over into this area talks about different parameters, what your polysomnography um, includes, and then any extra um, parameters is what they call them. And if you look, um, some of your sleep studies are unattended. So I kind of underline those. And then you get into your polysomnography over here. And these talk about with the additional one to three parameters. These are the actual parameters that they're talking about up here. Different EEG, EMG, EEG is brain waves, EMG is muscle 
different muscle conduction. You have nerve conduction tests as well. And do you remember when we were talking about uh, our spine surgeries and our laminectomies and discectomies and spinal fusions, the arthrodesis surgeries? Um, and I talked about evoked potentials. And we put a note at the top of the page way back in musculoskeletal that if you see documentation of evoked potentials, that this is where you would go. And here is finally where those codes are. So if a patient is having numbness in their arms before the surgery, uh, the surgeon, in his opinion, correctively um, fixes the problem during surgery, he is then going to conduct an evoked potentials or a reflex test to see if that numbness comes back or is still there. And that would be an indication of him taking care of the you know, problem or not. So that's what this is. Special EEG testing, um, 95955, 95955 is your EEG uh, monitoring during surgery of non-intracranial. So if the patient is having some kind of brain surgery or carotid artery surgery, um, or, uh, no, 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 intracranial, sorry, having brain surgery or intracranial surgery, then the EEG, the brain waves, are automatically bundled in. They, they're mandatory to watch uh, in those surgeries, so you would not use this. This is for potentially like a carotid artery down in the neck, carotid artery surgery, that um, that first part of the surgery where they're kind of bypassing around the carotids, they want to make sure that they're maintaining adequate blood flow within the brain during the surgery. So they have um, EEGs being done continually, continuously during a surgery. So that is wh when you would uh, use that code. Oh, I finally got that out, believe it or not. Um, kind of some technical brain mapping kind of funky types of tests. Then we get into our hydration or our, our infusions on page 657. Uh, this, all these green words, it's divided up. So our first section is just hydration. This is that sugar water or the salt water that they're giving you just as an IV hydration. You have to have 30, 31 minutes or more in order to use these codes, 30 minutes or less, you don't even get to code. And then it's based on hourly. We have our therapeutic type of injections, infusions, and pushes. These are not chemotherapy. Uh, you have IV PBs, that's IV piggybacks. Um, they can be infused for therapy. You can have them sequential. So I, ha I have this IV antibiotic or IV piggyback going. As soon as it's done, I'm going to go to the next one in sequence, and then I'm going to go to the next one in sequence. They're not being done at the same time, but they're being done sequentially, one after the other. Then you have concurrent. Maybe um, one drug needs to be given at the same time of, as another drug, or the two don't affect each other and can be given at the same time. So if you have a concurrent infusion, then that's the code that you would use. There are sub, uh, subcutaneous or into the fat infusions. And then you have therapeutic um, injections. And this is, we're on page 660, this is where at the very beginning of this section we talked about the immune globulins. Um, this is your therapeutic um, administration code, 96372. So this is the code that you would use for the administration part of the, the immune globulin shots that were given on the very first page of the medicine section. You have IV pushes. IV pushes are different than IV infusions or piggybacks. The pushes, there isn't IV line involved. You may have a HEPLOC or um, a, 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 um, venous access 
Um, and the nurse takes the um, syringe and direct into the line infuses or pushes in the medication. Um, depending on the medication, um, that determines the time um, that the nurse infuses it. Some medications have to be really, really, really slow and it may take 10 or 15 minutes. Some can go really fast and, and time isn't an issue. Now we have our chemotherapy, our chemotherapy drugs that are being administered. Um, under photodynamic therapy, um, read the parentheses underneath here because generally this is going to be an ocular photodynamic therapy and it tells you to go to the 67221. So kind of make note of that. Some different dermatological procedures. Then we get into our uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy codes. These are for the evaluations, the initial or the reevaluation of physical therapy, the initial or reevaluation of occupational therapy. Same thing for athletic training evaluations. Then, once those initial or reevaluation um, evals are done, then you actually have your modalities or the actual exercises that you're going to do when you go in for your uh, physical therapy or occupational therapy treatments. So that's what these uh, codes are. Uh, we're kind of at a really big catch-all because we're just kind of all over the place here in the back. We have active wound care management, which is debriding, kind of cleaning out, taking away devitalized um, uh, tissue in an effort to heal, heal the uh, wound up. We have some nutrition therapy, we have acupuncture, we have osteopathic uh, man manipulative treatment and chiropractic man ah, crazy chiropractic manipulative treatment. I know how to say it, just not on the spot. Um, your OMT is generally done by your DOs, doctors of osteopathic medicine. Your CMT is usually done by chiropractors. So that's the difference between them. We do have some non-face-to-face, non-physician services that could be paid, online medical evals that could be paid. And then we just have about a, a, a little bit of miscellaneous um, uh, information here, different educational supplies, hospital um, call service, just kind of some weird stuff in here, just kind of a, th a thrown in. Uh, services provided between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. I use this 99053 quite a bit in the emergency room for stuff between 2200 and uh, 0800. We have our moderate conscious sedation codes. Uh, really good information in here. Um, these are codes, uh, you go to the emergency room and you have a fractured wrist and the ER doc um, gives you some conscious sedation um, verset or something um, and he sets your, your fracture and then puts it in a cast or a splint or whatever is, is needed. Um, these are the conscious sedation codes that are going to be used based on time and based on age. Um, moderate conscious sedation um, codes always have um, an extra person in attendance to watch for respirations and, and heart rate, that kind of thing. Home health services, just a few in here, whether they're prenatal, postnatal, newborn, you know, what are they specific to? Maybe catheters, um, that kind of thing. And then that is it. So you have made it through um, all of the CPT manual. Um, you've been exposed to just about everything. So then we'll head on to HickPix.